Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. If you thought Indiana was a one-hit wonder in 2020, think again. The Hoosiers surprised everyone last year by going 6-2, and two, and with 17 starters now coming back in 2021, they could be even better than they were last year. So again, guys, welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, here to predict Indiana's schedule and record for 2021. As always, make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and also make sure to sh sign up for those expert picks. The link for that over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. It's down in the description. Some of the best college football spread picks and now NFL spread picks in the entire country for one of the lowest prices in the entire country. So make sure to go give that a look. Again, thegridironexpert.com down in the description below. So let's take a look at Tom Allen's squad, guys. Tom Allen was made headlines last year, not just for the job that he did at Indiana, but for the fire, the passion, the intensity that he brought every single day to this Indiana football program. It was unbelievable. And I would want to play for a coach like that. And I know that all the players in Bloomington want to play for Tom Allen. He gets them fired up and expects to win every single game, regardless of who it's against. We look at their roster. Eight starters are back on offense, and that's huge. It all starts really with the health of their quarterback and Michael Penix. He went down with a torn ACL towards the end of last season, missed their bowl game, a loss to Ole Miss. But he, when he was playing, he was phenomenal. Over 1,600 passing yards, 14 touchdowns, to just four interceptions. Keep in mind, he does have some dual threat ability as well. They return four starters up front on the offensive line, and he returns, Michael Penix does, one of his top wide receivers in Ty Freifogel, who had 721 yards and seven touchdowns last year. His big play ability is unreal and unmatched. And on top of that, they have one of the better tight ends in the Big Ten and Peyton Hendershot. And Indiana's offense is looking just fine. Only, where, only place really they have to improve is their rushing game. The Hoosiers only averaged 108.6 rushing yards per game, a little over three yards per carry. That's not good, and that's not going to cut it. They have to improve up front. When you look at the defense, guys, that was their strength last year. Their defense was a major reason why Indiana was in so many games and a major reason why they won so many games. The biggest storyline, though, is that they lose their defensive coordinator in Kane Womack, who left to take the head coaching position at South Alabama. But when he was there, the Hoosiers forced 20 turnovers. They led the Big Ten with 25 sacks. The good news is, while yes, they lose their defensive coordinator, the majority of those starters are back, nine total. Charlton Warren also, I will add, is a phenomenal defensive coordinator and will do just fine in Bloomington. But you look at the leaders, Micah McFadden, without a doubt the leader of this Indiana defense at linebacker. Jalen Williams is back at cornerback, had four interceptions last year. And Tom Allen did a phenomenal job utilizing the transfer portal. Ryder Anderson is in on the defensive line, coming in from Ole Miss. Somewhat full circle considering Ole Miss beat Indiana in the Outback Bowl. So having said all of that, guys, 17 starters back, some super seniors. Obviously, a lot of teams are going to be dealing with that because of COVID. The opportunity is there for Indiana to have a very special year in 2021, as if 2020 wasn't special enough. So let's take a look at their schedule and see if they can accomplish that. Because unlike 2020, uh, the 2021 schedule is a little bit difficult. They're going to play a full 12-game slate. And a road game in Iowa, Cincinnati in the non-conference, at Penn State, Ohio State, at Michigan. A lot of tough games on the schedule that Indiana's going to have to deal with. They kick off the season, though, against Iowa. And I just got to say this. To open your season on the road at Kinnick Stadium is certainly not ideal. Because we know how good Iowa is. Not just as a team, but especially as they are at home. Kinnick Stadium, one of the most difficult places to play in the entire country. Iowa is riding a lot of momentum into 2021. They finished the season on a six-game winning streak. Were unable to play in their bowl game, though, due to COVID. They returned their quarterback and Spencer Petrus. They returned one of the best running backs in the conference and Tyler Goodson. They returned seven starters on defense, a defense that ranked top 10 nationally in scoring, allowing 16 points per game, rushing, allowing 107.6 points per, or yards per game, and total defense, allowing just 313.8 total yards per game. Factor in that everybody is back in Iowa secondary, and we're going to pick Iowa to win this game. 
Michael Penix will be playing in his first game back since his torn ACL. How he fares will be very interesting to see. We know that Indiana's not going to bully you up front, especially with their run game, which means all Iowa has to do is focus on the pass. And I think they have enough to shut down Ty Freifogel and the Michael Penix at Kinnick Stadium. Season opener, sold out crowd. All signs to me point to an Iowa victory in what could be a top 15 matchup to kick off the year. Indiana then plays Idaho. We're going to give them a quick win there. They defeat the Vandals, and then they play Cincinnati. They play Cincinnati, and if you are a college football fan in any sort of capacity, you know that Cincinnati is the best group of five team in the country right now. And they are going to be a top 10 team, should be, when the season starts. If they're not, they will be when they play Indiana in week three. Cincinnati has a prime opportunity to get a top 15, top 20 victory on the road here, and then not too long after have an opportunity to do that again against Notre Dame. So Cincinnati is not only looking to win the American again, not only to make a New Year's Six Bowl game, but they're looking to maybe crash the college football playoff, which is why this is not an easy game for Indiana. It's not a shoe-in victory. Look, 12 starters are back for the Bearcats. They went 9-1 last year, nearly beat Georgia in the Peach Bowl. Their star quarterback, Desmond Ritter, is back. And their back seven on defense is going to be ferocious. Their linebacking core and their secondary is going to be very, very difficult, very hard to go up against. But in Bloomington, I'm going to go with Indiana in this game. I think Cincinnati is going to give everybody on their schedule a dogfight, especially Indiana and Notre Dame, their two biggest. But I think Indiana's defense rises to the occasion here. They have just enough to slow down Desmond Ritter, force him into a few mistakes. And when a game that I do think will be decided by one possession, I think Tom Allen's squad gets the job done at home. And they notch a top quality win against Cincinnati. While it's a group of five team facing a power five team, it could be a Power 5 team that upsets the Group of 5 team. Take away those titles, guys. We need to get rid of those Group of 5 and Power 5 titles because the game is drastically changing. So they beat Cincinnati. We think they beat Western Kentucky. Even though it is on the road, we think Indiana should take care of them relatively quickly. They then get into Big Ten play, and that's where it's going to get interesting. That's where Indiana's year will be made, right here, when they start facing off against some of the tougher opponents within the conference. And it starts at Penn State. If you remember, last year's first game of the year for Penn State and Indiana, they faced off against each other, and that took really kind of jump-started Indiana's season. They beat the Nittany Lions 36-35 to in overtime on a controversial ending with Michael Penix's uh, two-point conversion. So it jump-started Indiana's season. It kind of spiraled out of control for Penn State. That began a five-game losing streak for the Nittany Lions before they bounced back and won four straight to end the year. And look at this game. It's in Happy Valley. We know that's a very difficult place to play as well. Penn State, despite the 4-5 and five record, had one of the best defenses within the Big Ten, and their offense returns their big three. They return Sean Clifford at quarterback. They return Noah Kane at running back, who got injured in that game against Indiana. And Jahan Dotson is back as their top wide receiver. In Happy Valley, with revenge on their mind, I don't see Indiana coming on the road and winning this game. I have a lot of faith in James Franklin and Penn State that they will bounce back in a big way, and Indiana drops this one in Happy Valley. They're three and two going into their bye week. So when you look at that, guys, you're going to say three and two. Well, and they have yet to play Ohio State. Three and two. Uh, Tom Allen's a not a fluke, but uh, last year was a fluke for Indiana. Oh, uh, three and two. Maybe they'll win seven games, eight games, but they're not going to be as good as they were last year. Well, let's hold on. Let's pump the brakes for a second. They get their bye week. They play Michigan State. Chalk that up as a win. Michigan State. Should improve a little bit in year two under Mel Tucker. Not enough to come into Bloomington and beat an Indiana team off a week of rest. The Hoosiers beat the Spartans 24 to nothing last year, and I would expect a somewhat similar margin of victory. Spartans might put up some points this year, but they're not going to win on the road. Indiana then plays Ohio State at home. And look, if Indiana is a one-loss team coming into this game, it can very well determine who wins the Big Ten East. Because if they win this game with one loss... They'll then control their own destiny. But if they've already lost to Iowa and Penn State, like we are predicting, it's not going to matter as much because Ohio State, I don't know if they will lose at all, let alone lose two games within the conference. And that's something we have to keep in mind here. While if Indiana wants to beat Ohio State, they can. That's not going to matter when it comes to the Big Ten Championship if they've already lost two conference games because Ohio State will not lose two conference games. But nonetheless, we're going to talk about this game because last year Indiana only fell 42-35 to in Columbus to the Buckeyes. They were down 28 points and battled back. And I think that's a really big testament 
to the culture that Tom Allen is instilling with this program. Doesn't matter how much you're down, doesn't matter how much of an underdog you are, we're going to fight tooth and nail until the very end. And the Hoosiers did that and nearly pulled off the upset. But you look at Ohio State. They get a bye week before this game. So they're going to be well rested going into what is going to be one of their toughest games of the season. Any quarterback questions they have will be answered by this point. We believe C.J. Stroud will win the quarterback battle at Ohio State. Factor in Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, Master Teague, and a defense that only returns four starters, but like the quarterback situation, should be resolved and better by October 23rd. And we think Ohio State comes into Bloomington and steals a win against Indiana. A game that, like the Cincinnati game, we think is going to be very, very close. Indiana then gets a very, very favorable final five games. Only two of them are at home, but none of these teams really scream danger. Every single one of these teams had a losing record in 2020. And it starts at Maryland. This is an emotional game. Michael Penix got hurt against Maryland last year. The Hoosiers beat them 27-11, to but they lost their star quarterback in the process. Maryland allowed 230 rushing yards per game last year. This is a game where Indiana's rushing offense could finally wake up and put up some solid numbers. They weren't able to do so last year. They might be able to do so against the Terrapins on the road. But Maryland's secondary is very strong. Michael Penix has to be aware of that. And Maryland's offense is very dangerous too, has the potential to be. Coming off a potential devastating loss to Ohio State, Indiana has to be careful not to be hung over against the Terrapins. They cannot afford to have a Ohio State hangover. And I think this game against Maryland is going to be very, very close. Closer than maybe it should be. But I do think that the Hoosiers have just enough to win this game on the road. Tom Allen's squad wakes up, maybe a little too late. They might wake up late, but they're going to beat the Terrapins. They then travel to Michigan. We know the Big House is not an easy place to play. We know the Big House, especially now with fans there, is not going to be an easy place to play. And Michigan is a team that disappointed greatly last year. And in the midst of their disappointment, they got blown out by Indiana losing to the Hoosiers 38-21 to in Bloomington. Well, Michigan's defense we know is going to be very solid. Nine returning starters on that side of the ball, led by the fantastic defensive end, Aiden Hutchinson. But Michigan's offense remains in question. Who's going to be their quarterback? Cade McNamara, J.J. McCarthy, Alan Bowman. Who knows? Maybe they alternate. We don't know what's going to happen in Ann Arbor. So while the defense is going to be their strength, I don't feel very confident in Michigan's offense, and really have we ever under Jim Harbaugh. Have we ever felt confident in Michigan's offense when Jim Harbaugh has been there? While this game is in the big house, I do think Michigan's offense is going to struggle against this Indiana defense. They're going to struggle against Indiana's defense. And this has the potential, guys, to be a low-scoring game in the big house, a defensive struggle. But I'm going to take the team that I think has the better offense, the one that has the bigger big play ability, and that's Indiana. And I'm going to pick Indiana to go on the road and win at Michigan. And I know a lot of people will disagree with that. I think it's a shot. But they beat Michigan by 17 last year. I don't see a 17-point swing in the span of one year, especially when Indiana returns as much as they do, and as they're still maybe fighting for a New Year's Six Bowl spot, trying to finish the year on a high. They beat Michigan on the road. I think they come back and they beat Rutgers. They beat the Scarlet Knights by 16, 37-21 last year. Rutgers is improving. Their com- competition, their competitiveness is improving drastically. Greg Schiano's getting this team places. Might get to a bowl game in 2021. If he doesn't, he definitely will in 2022. But it is in Bloomington. After a two-game road stint, Indiana's not going to disappoint. They'll beat the Scarlet Knights. They're also going to beat Minnesota. We think they're going to beat Minnesota at home. Like Maryland, Minnesota had a horrible rushing defense last year, allowed 207.1 rushing yards per game. This is an opportunity for Indiana to flex their muscles just a little bit, try to run the ball a little bit more, then passing it, which we know they're going to want to do more often with Penix and Freifogel and Hendershot. At home against Minnesota, a team that will bounce back, similar to Penn State. They'll bounce back, but they're not going to lose to the Golden Gophers at home. Indiana rounds out the year against their rival in Purdue, and obviously this is a trap game. Rivalry week, period, is always a trap game, right? doesn't matter what your records are. Remember, we always just throw those out the window. Rivalry week brings out the best in everybody. And 2019, the last time these two teams met, Indiana survived in triple overtime. The last four games between these two squads have been decided by one possession. I would expect nothing less in 2021, especially with the game being in West Lafayette. 
Purdue needs to figure out who's going to be their quarterback. Jack Plummer, Aiden O'Connell, we're not quite sure yet. Maybe alternate a little bit. But whoever it is is going to be giving the ball to David Bell. Indiana shuts down David Bell. They win this game because I do not have faith right now in the Boilermakers' defense. So Indiana, I do think, in another one-possession game against their rival, goes on the road and beats Purdue, a team that will be flirting with bowl eligibility by this point in the season, by the season finale. Very well could determine who goes to a bowl game, or if they go to a bowl game, which is ironic, considering many years ago, Indiana, a few times, their postseason fate resided in the last game against Purdue, and it could be the other way around in 2021. So having said all of that, guys, we have Indiana going 9-3 in 2021. Losses to Iowa, Penn State, and Ohio State. Now again, maybe you disagree. Maybe you think they'll beat Penn State or Iowa. But I don't know. I'm not feeling that. 17 returning starters. This team has talent. And if you're an Indiana fan, you have to be thrilled with 9 wins to go to another high-level bowl game. Maybe not New Year's Six, but still outback-level caliber bowl game. And maybe you can finally win a bowl game this time. It's a Hoosier still are searching for that elusive bowl victory. But Tom Allen continuing to do great things in Bloomington, Indiana, 9-3 in 2021. And that, to me, is far from a disappointment. So guys, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Also, make sure to check out everything down in the description below, including signing up for our expert picks, some of the best college football spread picks, and now NFL spread picks in the entire country for one of the lowest prices in the entire country. Make sure to go give that a look. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on The Gridiron Expert.